YouTube, uh, Louie here. Uh, today I'm going to bring you uh, a really neat resource for the community. For those of you that are collecting uh, poured silver ingots, um, I have, uh, I'm going to show you the website of a gentleman by the name of Ken Conaway, who um, is uh, um, a leader in the, the field of identifying old and valuable silver ingots. Uh, so much so that he has been featured in uh, in Coin World, and here is the article. And then I'm going to take you to his website where he identifies um, silver ingots and uh, notates uh, pretty much every mint that can be found, and has examples from many of them. So you can use this as you're out there buying old mint, old uh, ingots and uh, trying to identify what you've picked up, or possibly to help you catalog what. Uh, you know your collection in whatever uh, phase you're in. I'm just beginning my collection but uh, I have found uh, his website very very helpful and I do hope you'll bookmark it. Uh, so let me show you around really quickly. Uh, this is the article from Coin World. Uh, it's called uh, Ingots are an older form of mint five ounce silver bullion pieces. Guest commentary. Uh, shown left to right are type one, two, and three five ounce silver ingots from the San Francisco Mint, dating from the 1930s to the late 20th century. But isn't that interesting? If you're a coin dealer, coin collector, or just coin numismat numismatic enthusiast, chances are good that you have encountered a U.S. government-issued silver bar before. Silver bars, or ingots, were produced at the U.S. Assay Office in New York, the Philadelphia Mint, and the San Francisco Mint collectively for almost 100 years, 1892 to 1984. I've been collecting these historical gems over the past six years, but find that information about their production is more scarce than the ingots themselves. My research and collection efforts to date have focused on those produced at the San Francisco Mint in the 5-ounce class. I have been able to identify the various series that were made, but continue to search for information that would certify a production timeline. I've been writing about my findings and posting photographs for two years now on my blog, and I will take you to that blog in just a second. Hopefully through this article I can reach out to Coin World readers to assist with this research. Pictured here is an ingot that dates back to what I believe to be the very first series of the early 1930s, bearing what is known as a Type 1 oval hallmark. I've been able to approximate the dating of this particular type through a number of early 1930s coin auction catalogs by M. H. Bollinger, Orangeville, Illinois, and a documented donation to the American Numismatic Society on June 21, 1939 by David Bulawa. A note with the donation states the donor purchased the ingot in 1935 for $5. These Type 1 oval hallmark ingots were produced with three different font sizes, each with two different fineness stamps, 999.75 and 999.5, and then in a series without serial numbers for a total of seven varieties. The latest of these was produced in the mid-1940s as evidenced by a receipt as part of a collection picture. If anyone has any information that will help with my efforts to accurately date and chronologically organize almost 150 five-ounce class examples presently in my collection, please contact me. All right, I'm going to take you over to his blog spot, but uh, you can see that he is a very, very serious collector of uh, old silver ingots. But uh, even more impressive is his blog spot. And here is uh, the beginning of the blog. Um, it is just called Silver Ingots. It is uh, uh, www.silveringot.blogspot.com. And from what I've seen on the internet, this is the authoritative site for old ingots. Um, I can't find anything else. I could not even find a book on the subject. So I think you will want to bookmark this site, uh, silveringot.blogspot.com. And what's really impressive here is he has cataloged, I believe, most of the uh, mints from A through Z. Uh, I haven't gotten through Z yet, but I definitely have seen... Uh, um, uh, every time I've looked for something, it has been here. Here is his introduction, written in 2013. 
uh, technology, might as well try it. I have been photographing my U.S. Mint at San Francisco collection for recordation and decided to start photographing some of my other collection. That leads to the idea of sharing those pictures with other collectors and anyone who has similar interests. This is my test blog, so I'm keeping it short and sweet. I've really no idea how this works or who will get to enjoy the post, but here it goes. Starting off with a name that almost that most collectors are familiar with, uh, and he's starting in the A's, I think. Uh, American Smelting and Refining Company. The accompanying card is itself explanatory, but in addition to that information, the Rosario Mine dates back to 1880, with Julius Valentine of New York founded the New York and Honduras Rosario Mining Company. Uh, I'm not going to keep reading here. Now I'm going to start going through his blog, and he will have uh, artifacts like this. Um, Let's see, oh, you can't see the whole thing, but this is a miniature bar, a five ounce bar that he is uh, very proud of. <clears throat> I believe he owns all of these. Um, here is an example from, um, I, I think he's calling these his boxes. Uh, this is from his A box. And uh, I'm going to need to move my, oopsie, I'm going to need to move my screen a little bit here. Um, so uh, Academy, I think, is in his A box. So here we go. There's uh, seven different varieties of Academy ingots. Uh, then he usually goes on to tell you a little bit about each of them. Blog is organized on the right-hand side here by year. If you go into 1913, I mean, sorry, you go into 2013 and you go to the first post, um, you'll see uh, the A box. Uh, let's see. And he goes through the various mints. Here is the Academy Mint, the Arizona Assay Office ingots. Um, when I click on these, I seem to go to a different location, so I'm not going to uh, click on these pictures. Arizona Assay Office. Look at this beautiful collection. Just beautiful. Um, this is from... Uh, I don't see the date, I'm sorry. Uh, here we go to the... Uh, Again, Arizona Assay Office. Let's move on to the next one. Um, we are still in the A box uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, here we go with uh, Amex, American Gold Deposit Corporation, Argen, Argentum, okay, various other bars. Here is a Sarco, 1982, 5.5 ounce. Um, I'm not sure. I may be going backwards on this. But uh, let me get over to, uh, let's see, uh, the boxes. Um, okay, so that was the introduction, introduction part two. Uh, more from the A box. That might be where I am. Okay, yeah, that's where I was, more from the A box. And then we can go on to March 2013. Uh, now we can go to the B box. All right, here we go in the B box is one of the lightest of all with only seven different hallmarks represented. So he's categorized these by uh, alphabet and apparently B is, uh, is uh, not as many companies named B. Here is a name that many of you will know, the Bunker Hill Company. Uh, just reading a little bit, uh, other B ingus, ingots of interest include Bajuco Ryu uh, from Marina, California. Um, Uh, and this and the Bunker Hill. Um, okay, I'm not going to uh, stay here forever. Let me go on to the next box, the C box, part one. Apparently, there are quite a few uh, C ingots. Uh, consolidated Mines. Let's take a look at these. Uh, is that Consolidated Mines? Uh, the second picture has the two pipes I've come across. On the left is a 1980 obverse. Um, huh, it, the hellmark doesn't seem to say consolidated mines. Oh, there it is, consolidated mines in the circle. Beautiful bar. Uh, let me keep going. Um, in the C box part two. Oh, here we go, the C box. Uh, here we have Cascade Refining, Cripple Creek. Coin Shack, Casey Refining, Cincinnati Gold and Refining. Of course, Ohio is very big in precious metals. Aren't those beautiful? Let me see if I can get that a little bigger for you. 
Crown Metals, there's a familiar name. Okay, let's see if we have any others. Um, oh, here's Cripple Creek. Very nice. Here is Coin Shack. Oh, look at that mint. I've seen this one before. Uh, Doyle's Mint. Uh, is that part of Coin Shack? Well, if it is or isn't, he will certainly tell you here. And if you have information about rare ingots or you go through his listing, um, feel free to let him know that you've identified a new variety. I'm sure he'd love to know. He's not uh, uh, terribly active, but I believe when he finds a new example, he, uh, he tries to catalog it here, and he's done a great job. Um, C box has three different parts. Let's go to the D box. Okay, in the D box we have uh, Doyle's Mint. Oh, I guess I was in the D box. Um, we have uh, Fee Fell Company, DMS, Drew Refining, DGSE. DGSE, that is the company that Elemental um, is acquiring. Um, very interesting. I didn't know DGSE was uh, was that old mint. Uh, so more information. Oh my gosh, look at this Doral. I believe all of these are in his collection, and wouldn't that be something to have a collection like this? Not just cool bars, but he has, um, it's basically a typeset of ingots. Um, Homestake Interruption. Interruption to the routine alphabetical approach. Oh, okay, here's, I guess, a, a one-off, Homestake Mining Company, 1976. Uh, as you uh, look more into these bars, you will see that there are the, um, you know, of bars that are traditionally available on eBay uh, from the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, etc. And there, then there is this group of bars that is much, much older that are really historical artifacts and for some of us might even be uncollectible because of the, the cost. But you'll see some of those historical bars more in auctions and rare rare metals auctions. Uh, okay, we're going to go to April. Let's see if we have more boxes here. Uh, in April, we have the A through D update. Okay, well, you can see, let me go to May. Okay, May, we have the F list. <laughs> uh, um, uh, before publishing the F list, an update to the last blog. Okay, I won't go into that. But Federal Silver Refinery, Federated Bullion, Finer Inc., First Majestic, etc., etc. Uh, here is a picture from Andy at Crossroad Coins in Vidalia, Ohio, mailed me, U.S. Assay Office, San Francisco. I just think it's fantastic when you can get the assay card uh, along with the ingot. What a wonderful uh, match that is. Um, Part two of the F box. Here we have uh, Foster Incorporated in Walla Walla, Washington. Uh, uh, 69, 70. Look at these. Oh, so he's got some. Uh, he's got some rounds in here as well. What are these? Foster produced two completely different box sets from Out of the West series in three ounce annually in 1968, 69, and 70, and the Silver Eagle Nest set in 1969. Wow, look at those. So that's kind of like um, one of your first rounds, I guess. Well, I don't really know, but very cool. Look at those. Okay, sorry, I was uh, getting lost in uh, this blog here, but um, uh, and I, I got timed out. I'm back with Engelhard in the e-box, part three. Um, no expert here on Engelhard, but according to Wikipedia, Engelhard was started in 1902 by Charles W. Engelhard with the purchase of the Charles Crossell Meyer Company in Newark, New Jersey. Um, he had acquired other companies. Here pictured are four earlier types. Haven't checked with Chris or Tom, but according to about.ag, these are four of the least some four, or at least some ten five-ounce varieties known that precede the modern P and C series. Uh, let me read that again. Pictured first are four 
of the earlier types. Haven't checked with Chris or Tom, but according to about.ag, these are four of at least some of the 10 5 ounce varieties known that precede the modern P and C series. Okay, so let's get a good look at these early Engelhard bars. Uh, well, trying to, and it's not working. So um, here we have uh, that one. Ooh, that's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Recently acquired in a trade from Chris, an extremely rare Engelhard 5-ounce extruded example. So he's doing extruded bars as well. And all there is is an E. Yeah, it's just an E uh, wrapped in a, um, in a box. Merely sketching, scratching the surface of Engelhard. Anyone interested in more information? Chris or Tom could certainly help. If you don't already know them, let me know and I will make the introduction. Uh, this is Ken Conaway. We probably ought to click on over here to um, aboutag.com. Is that what he says this is? Uh, uh, D, 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 D. Yeah, he says, according to aboutag, about.ag. Let's, uh, let's see what's over there. All right, I'm back. I'm sorry, I was not able to uh, find that website, but uh, I'm going to start to conclude this uh, video. Um, here is his last post, so now we are up to 2017, and the New York Assay Office Silver Ingots, uh, Part 8, uh, recently acquired, uh, the recently acquired New York Assay Office single I ingot, silver ingot, pictured in the first plate below, bears a hallmark similar to that of the earliest NYAO known to exist, but is not dated. All right, I won't read this all to you. I hope you will get over to this website and check out just the gorgeous pictures and the narrative, the explanation, the chronology, the history of silver is all kind of in uh, much of, um, of these bars. What a wonderful collection. I hope someday um, he, may, he may show them to us uh, in, in the raw. But he has so much here, I can't imagine. Um, gosh, even the storage would be uh, difficult, I imagine. Look at this uh, 999 and one half. Now that is really cool. That is really cool. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, okay, uh, here are some comments. So um, let's see, I will take you out on, uh, on a picture of, uh, well, that one's upside down. Let's go out on a picture of this bar. But um, I am just so impressed with this website and uh, you know, you, you, there are rare bars in here, definitely, that many of us will never touch. But there are also common bars. Um, I know when I recently looked up the Jackson uh, Mint um, and the, you saw the Engelhard and some of the more current uh, mints, he's definitely got a wide-ranging collection in his A through Z boxes. So it's not just uh, rare stuff. It was really um, a catalog. Of, uh, of the mints as well as examples of uh, quite a few of the bars. So uh, this is, uh, from what I have seen, is uh, kind of the Bible on silver ingots. And I want to congratulate Ken on his uh, collection and thank him for allowing me to do this video. I do hope you'll all bookmark his blog and uh, from time to time I'll bring you uh, um, new additions uh, and maybe someday we'll even get an interview with him. All right, this is Louis signing out. Hope you enjoyed this. Bye everybody.